Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. So, why are we on a bus again? My car broke down. Yes, but why do we all have to ride the bus? Me and Dan's cars still work. Yeah, why do we listen to Tom? Oh my... I just asked you for a ride, Dan! You suggested we take the bus. I didn't suggest that. The public bus sucks. This man is peeing on my foot. Hey, didn't we see you in a museum, sir? Didn't you have superpowers? Uh... Alright! We're taking over the bus! Wait, like for reals? This is really happening. Who who hijacks the bus anymore? (laughs) Or, or, or is this some kind of science experiment? (laughs) Back to the Future Part 3? Come on, seriously? You know, when they're hijacking the train and the conductor's like, is this a hijacking? And then Doc Brown's all like, no, this is a science experiment. Come on. I, uh, uh, huh? (laughs) <laughs> no, wait, I get it. You guys are trying to break a beauty pageant, aren't you? What, are you going to use a bomb and a tiara? Miss Congeniality. Oh, come on. Seriously? Sandra Bullock. Oh, you know this movie. It's one of Kirstie Alley's highest rated roles. You're not taking this seriously at all, are you? Hey, don't come after me, man. You'll get hit. Um, wait. Um, no, um... I got this. Uh, be sure to tell the bus driver not to hit anyone running after the person trying to meet their pen pal. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole movie. The lake house? Come on, seriously? Like, you know, where Sandra Bullock writes a letter to Keanu Reeves in the past telling him not to chase after her because he gets hit by a car and dies at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, wait, you son of a bitch. I haven't seen that movie yet. I was going to watch that tonight with my wife. God damn it, I'm gonna throw your ass off the bus. But we're going 50 miles an hour. Wait. Uh, Is there a bomb on the bus? I mean, do we have to keep going 50 miles per hour? That's it. Get off the bus. Wait, what? Get over here, you son of a bitch. I'm just trying to... I'm just saying it's a good movie. I mean, just... It, that's why you don't spoil movies, Dan. I'm Tuck just, and I'm roll, Dan. To, Tuck just, and I just, roll. Oh, no, just, you just, son of a bitch. Go for oh. fuck me. Oh, you son of a bitch. Sorry about him. It's all right. So, you want to go back to hijacking? <sighs> you know what? My heart's really not in it anymore. I stopped the bus up here. I'm just going to get off. Forget I was here, folks. So, um, what do you want to do now? Do you want to go back and get Dan, or...? Eh? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Rise and shine, campers! Put on your booties, because it's cold outside! It's cold out there every day! That's right, woodchuck chuckers! It's Groundhog's Groundhog's Day! Day. It's the Groundhog Day Parade to Punxsutawney! We've got everything here in this here parade. Hey, it's Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. Oh, and uh, Dennis Hopper. In speed! Oh, wow! Now we have Keanu Reeves in... Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey! Oh, my God, and William Sadler! Die Hard 2! Oh, my God! Bruce Willis! Armageddon! Don't look now, don't look now, it's Ken Hudson Campbell! To... Groundhog's Day! Parade down the streets of Punxsutawney with Dan, Tom, and Josh every Tuesday at the fire pit as they make their way down to the most timeless holiday of the season, Groundhog's Day! The winter may be long, but hey, they got you, babe. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to another fast-paced episode of the Fire Pit. Zoom, baby! 
I'm Tom, British name Thompson. And after playing the most amazing game of basketball ever, shut up, Dan. We're back on the parade to Punxsutawney towards 1993's Groundhog's Day. I thought it was 1994 Groundhog's Day. 93. Yeah. Apologize if I'm speeding through this. But to get there, we need to get here. Or to get there, we need to get to tonight's film. Yes, that's it. That's the ticket. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them to this one. And now to tell us more about what we're watching and who we're watching, I, the next stop is Nigel. Thank you, Thompson. Nigel here, American name Dan. And last week we watched Gene Hackman coach the Hickory High basketball team to an Indiana State Championship. And he also helped redeem Dennis Hopper's character in the eyes of his son in a rather touching subplot in the film. And now, joining his colleagues Jimmy Stewart and Gene Hackman, we follow Dennis Hopper tonight to 1994's Speed. Uh, Dennis Hopper being uh, the first one that's been in three or more episodes. Uh, to 1994's Speed, also starring Sandra Bullock and some, I don't know, nobody named Keanu Reeves. Eh, whatever. It's a classic action film, all 90s style. And to tell us all about the numbers and facts, the next stop is Josh. And uh, you've just made it to your next stop. Thank you, Dan. Josh here, British name Reginald. And as mentioned tonight, we are on speed. I mean, we're watching speed. But, you know, it's starring the aforementioned Dennis Hopper, who is really the main veteran in the lead role of this film. But it also stars one Sandra Bullock in her star-making role and one Keanu Reeves, who experienced a career resurgence, in a way, thanks to this particular film. It was honestly this film that helped solidify him as an action star, eventually landing him roles like Neo in The Matrix and John Wick in John Wick. But this movie was released in June of 1994. It's directed by Jean de Bont, or is it de Bon? De Bon. The T is pronounced. Oh, gotcha. It has a running time of 116 minutes, had a budget of $30 million, and a box office return of $350 million. Now... This movie had a fairly fun run. I mean, it ran till the Labor Day weekend, so from June to September. Now, its opening weekend was a fun weekend. There's a lot of heavy hitters there on that weekend. It premiered at number one, pulling in $14 million on uh, that its opening weekend. And it bumped out the Flintstones, which would have been its its third week in uh its third week in the box office. The Flintstones. Ooh. The Flintstones. But it also premiered that weekend with City Slickers 2, which premiered at number three. And then in its fourth week of release was uh, Maverick, the James Garner, Mel Gibson, old uh, Wild oh, West. Oh, like a comedy uh, dramedy thing, the, the M- Maverick. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, it's their Ma- poker yeah, one. Okay. That's one of the five Westerns I'd seen before we started uh, watching Westerns. And I love that film. But then at number five was uh, Danny DeVito, Renaissance Man which is one where he was hired on to help a bunch of kids at uh, Army Boot Camp. Yeah, and learn English. But, and stuff. I actually like that film. That was, that was a good one. That was a good one. But uh, also in theaters during this, uh, this weekend was Beverly Hills Cop 3, which was at number six. The Crow, which was at number nine. Four Weddings and a Funeral, which was at number 10 on, on its 14th week of release. And uh, Schindler's List, which was on its 26th week of release. So it was a pretty heavy weekend, especially in the top five, at least recognizable popular films. No kidding. I, wow. I forgot about 94 being such a heavy year, man. Yeah, 94 was a big year for movies, a lot like 1989 and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, how does the film fare in terms of popularity, though, Josh? I mean, Rotten Tomato, et cetera, IMDb, et cetera. Well, um, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and stall for a second while I look this up. <laughs> But uh, IMDb, it's got a 7.2 out of 10. That's 327,000 uh, reviews, mm-hmm. which isn't too bad. And it's got a 94% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So clearly it was uh, well-received. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what is it? Like anything between a 6 and a 7 is a meh film we've discovered. Potentially terrible. Yeah. But typically if it's over 7, we tend to like it. I'm not saying that we always go with the reviews. Cough, cough, true grit, cough, yeah, cough. Yeah, also I think Green Mile has like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and all three of us walked away at best thinking that film was meh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I liked it, but yeah, it was long. Yeah, but it wasn't as good as like Shawshank because we watched Shawshank the week before and then we watched Green Mile and like... 
Shawshank's got like a 90 some percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And we're like, yeah, this is a classic. And then we watched Green Mile. And I was like, mm. Of course, that could also be the, uh, the similar scenario of, you know, going for a McDonald's after having a nice steak. Yeah, that's I think that is a far more accurate analogy to that one or like a knockoff steak place so like you had the good steakhouse and then you go to yeah, I don't apple know, applebee ste- and apple, yeah. Get, yeah, get, an, yeah, get a get an applebee steak after you just got done eating a a, a porterhouse from a fine steakhouse mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and once again go ahead if you're if you're playing the fire pit drinking game take your drink because we just made a food analogy <laughs> i know i did <laughs> We do have a thing with food, don't we? We do. It's easy. We do. People like food and people like movies. We do both on this podcast. Maybe we should eat before we record these. Maybe we won't come into this hungry. It might be a smart idea. Come to the fire pit, watch a movie, gain five pounds. (laughs) Lord knows I do. But yeah, so it was a very well-received movie, made a shit ton of money, which would warrant a good sequel, right? Well, you're wrong. But... uh, Anywho, I know Tom, Dan and myself have seen this movie. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I don't think Tom has seen it. So, Tom, I'm curious, what are you expecting to get out of this film? What do I expect? Pain. That's from um, Rocky Three. Um, you know that yeah, uh, we got Clubber it. Lang. We got it, Tom. Yeah, we are you it. sure? It's from it's, Clubber Lang, played by a, Mr. T. Yeah, this is a movie podcast, Tom. We got it. You sure I could spend another 10 minutes explaining the joke? But we, you're right. We need to speed along here. Honestly, Dead I'm puns, drink. hey I don't know what to expect from this film. It always struck me as a Jerry Brockheimer popcorn schlock fest, which is why I never really had inclinations of seeing it when it was new. And I've never really wanted to see it since, probably because also it's been so over parodied that I've essentially seen it already, just in parody form. Honestly, this uh, this film going in blind, it's definitely interesting. Tech directed by John DeBrant, this was their first film, and they went on to direct Twister, The Haunting, Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life, and Speed Two. Honestly, not their first choice. They wanted John McTiernan to direct. Um, he did Die Hard, but he said, I've done this film before. It was called Die Hard. <laughs> Get Jan to do it. And um, yeah, apparently the script was so much like that the writer is of this film that we're going to watch is essentially Joss Whedon. Because Joss Whedon was brought in uh, to fix Graham Yost's script. Yeah, didn't they say that like all of the dialogue is basically Joss Whedon, but he's still unaccredited? On this one, ninety-eight point nine percent of the of the dialogue, including uh, Dan's favorite line, "Pop quiz, hot shot." He also uh, changed a lot of the characterization. Uh, Traven was supposed to be more Maverick, hot shot, and then he became more like Keanu Reeves, only driving a bus. This and the other small things here and there. So I think in the past we've had films that have had to be doctored a lot, and those have been mixed bags. I think one of the films we saw, they brought someone in to fix a script and then they brought the original writer to fix the fixing and they just changed it back. And we cough watched- quick in the dead cough. Thank you, Josh. Yes. And yeah, that helped. Oh boy, did that help. He said, sir, Cat. That was Joss Whedon too, remember? Was that Joss? No, that wasn't Joss Whedon. That re- Joss Whedon came back and did the ending. He rewrote the ending of that oh, film. I thought, the, I thought he did. Yeah, he did some script rewrites and the ending. No, someone else was brought in to rewrite the whole script. Yeah. Then they- It was Joss Whedon's bright idea to turn the entire town into a fucking Claymore mine <laughs> uh, at the last shootout. <laughs> he probably just looked at it and be like, this film can't get any more ridiculous. What do we just do? Blow it up? Dude. No, I'm just starting to think that I'm starting to think that Buffy and Firefly were the exceptions, not the rule. Anyways, <laughs> go on. Yeah, but the, so I'm obviously having a Joss Whedon 90s script here. Eh, I'm not so sure about that. Keanu Reeves, before this, he plays Jack Traven in this. I mean, he had yet to, as Nigel said, get into the action role. This was one of his first ones. Before this, he was in um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Parenthood, and Bram Stoker's Dracula. I always remember this as being after or before Bram Stoker's, but apparently this came after and his British accent in that film. If you haven't seen it, so spot on. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, Bram Bram Stoker was kind of a career hiccup mm-hmm. for him, and he had a hard time finding roles. He was lucky to fall into the uh, role of, in Point Break, 
which is actually what helped him get this this movie because mm-hmm. Point Break Point Break came out before this one. That's right, it did. Yeah, yeah. Good, me- good memory, yeah. Joss. I mean, Dan. So <laughs> I Dan swear to God, I get no Dan credit for any. Joss Whedon did rewrites on this script yeah, too. Tom, <laughs> apparently not. He forgot the Rotten Tomato score. Tom, Tom uh, mixed up Dan and Josh. Take a drink. <laughs> But so, but this was one of his first really actiony action roles. I mean, he did a few of his own stunts on this one too. So coming in, new Dennis Hopper. I mean, he played just a regular guy who snapped one day, and we love Dennis Hopper and everything he's in. We, at least we're going to get that. And this also Sandra Bullock, who was in Love Potion Number Nine and Demolition Man before this. So a mix of comedy and action. Um, Jeff Daniels, Joe Morton. So it's got some names that you would recognize, but most of them, this was their first or second real action film. So we got, we're going to see, if anything, a lot of these names that we're now used to seeing in action roles or haven't seen in action roles in a while, you know, just ham it up, cheese it up, you know, pop that popcorn. And I'm just um, curious to see what the hype was all about behind this film. I'm expecting I'm really not going to like this. I, it, at worst, or at best, it'll probably be a Aquaman scenario where it's bad, but I get a kick out of it. But at worst case scenario, I don't even want to think about it. Dan, what about you? When was the last time you saw this? Uh, n- not on TV. Probably, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Like, just sat down and actually watch this film um i will say this tom you were, you were giving comparisons between joss whedon and like his rewrite of quick and the dead and then speed quick and the dead had a 59 percent on rotten tomato and this one has like a 95 so then and i think this movie holds up a lot better than the quick and the dead also this movie codified a lot of tropes in action films kind of like how die hard quote uh codified a lot of tropes in action films but sometimes it's like you don't you avoid this one because you're like, I've already seen this movie. I've already seen all the shit they do in this movie and other movies. But this movie did it first and it does it a little bit better. Kind of like no all the Die Hard clones. All, they always say, you know, Die Hard on a plane, Die Hard on a whatever are never as good as the original Die Hard, mm-hmm. you know. And this one is and I think if they advertised that this was Die Hard on a bus or something like that. So, I mean, it, it's got kind of the same scenario, a, a regular cop. I think actually, I think Jack Trapp was like a bomb squad or a, a SWAT team guy in this one, but a, re- a regular cop kind of getting in over his head on something that's kind of qu- very quickly snowballing out of control as the movie goes on. Um, so I, it's it's very similar to Die Hard, but um, and they said the script wasn't was about the same. That doesn't shock me. Um, well, what are my expectations getting out of this film? I, I know I'm going to like it because I do actually love this movie. I think it holds up really well because, again, they use a lot of practical effects in this movie. And they're not over the top. Well, they're over the top for an action film, over the top for as compared to real life. But, like, if you've ever seen the sequel, the sequel's fucking stupid. And the special effects and the, the, the action set pieces just are dumb and over the top. And you're just like, there's no way. In this one, you do have a couple moments where, like, okay, yeah, this is an action film. But, like, they use practical effects. They use stunts. And they use actual explosions. And they they did a lot of it themselves. And I think those help movies hold up a lot better than putting it all in front of a green screen. Especially 90s green screen. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I do like about this film. But my expectations are, I know I'm going to like it. I'm just really looking forward to watching it with you guys. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I always like watching my favorite movies with you guys. Except for True Grit, because Josh hated it. Accurate. <laughs> but Josh, what about you? What are your expectations? How long has it been since you've seen this movie? Oh, uh, between 20 and 25 years. Oh, God. Okay, even longer than me. I might. I, I haven't seen it, I don't think, since... I joined the military and that was 17 years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. So mm-hmm. do you remember liking it when you saw it? Oh, yeah. I remember really enjoying it. I remember thinking it was a bit slow. Uh, and keep in mind, you uh, thought this movie was slow. Oh, I remember thinking I didn't like certain parts of the film. And I kept thinking that some of the acting was kind of uh, corny. Like, I didn't love the movie. Let's put it like that. I think I liked it in the way that I liked. And keep in mind. Again, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie, so I'm going based off of my emotional reaction to the movie at the time. I think I, w- I want to say I uh, liked it like I like Aquaman. Like, I acknowledge it's not a great movie, or I acknowledged that it's not a great movie, but it was a fun movie. But I just felt like it was weak in certain spots. Enough to not watch it in two decades. 
or so. Like, I've never had the urge to go back and rewatch this film. Like, you know, I'll be sitting around the house just, I feel like watching a movie. Ooh, Die Hard, I'll watch that one. Or, ooh, Armageddon, I'll watch that one. You know, even though movies that I just, I don't acknowledge are bad movies, I'll pick them up and I'll watch them. I've never felt that way about this one. And I remember thinking certain parts of this was kind of corny and like it was a good movie, but I'm probably never going to watch it again scenario. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So my expectations are uh, well, clearly I wouldn't be watching this anytime soon if we, this one came up on this list. I don't know. It's like I want to say I gave it like a six or a seven at the time. Honestly, my expectations are I'd say about average. I'm not expecting a lot out of it. But if uh, I come out of this enjoying it more than I remember enjoying it, then um I think that'll be good. I mean, it, the bar is set low enough to where if it meets expectations, it's not going to take a lot hmm. to do that. Well, if it's any uh, help, I'm just looking up some of the uh, past critical responses to this film at the time, I guess some professional, pro um, not podcasters, I almost said, we're professional podcasters. We are. We've got 41 episodes under our belt. Yes, we do. Professional. But some critic from the BBC, uh, they actually did a rewatch uh, back in 2017. And they said, yeah, it still stands the test of time. Still a cheeseball film. Not bad for a remake of 1976, The Big Bus. But yeah, and still a good film. Apparently, yeah, this film is a loose remake of a comedy called The Big Bus. Uh, Learned that too, looking that up. Wow, that's interesting. Interesting, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no which idea. was a disaster movie parody. Like I said, I think the movie holds up because... It's a cheese ball action film, but like I said, as I said before, they use actual practical special effects and explosions, and that to me helps it hold up. And honestly, Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock have great chemistry in this film. And Dennis Hopper and Keanu Reeves have great chemistry, as, you know, as protagonist and antagonist. I think that the acting in this movie is, really helps it, just like Die Hard. Die Hard's a cheese ball action film that codified a lot of tropes, but damn it if the acting in that film isn't superb. You know, mm -hmm. Bruce, oh, yeah. I mean, Bruce yeah. Willis and Alan Rickman, like everyone plays off each other so well in that movie. They sell that movie so well. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I don't want to say I hated the movie. I want to say I came out of it watching it. It was mediocre because I didn't watch it in theaters. I remember watching it in my living room on VHS, but but I'm looking forward to an objective viewing with you guys. Yeah. This is an odd situation where both of us, Josh, are going into a film with apprehension and it's not a Western. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase. I remember most beats of the movie, and I remember enjoying the movie. I just don't remember being floored by this movie. I just remember thinking, oh, okay, that was kind of fun. What are we doing next? Yeah, maybe I got fond movies or fond memories of this movie. Uh, again, my, my uncle had that badass surround sound uh, home theater system back when this movie came out. And this was one of the movies that we would watch on his system a lot, like Speed and Apollo 13. So that's why I, I have fond memories of this movie. But I don't know. To me, this is like Independence Day. This is just a movie I like to watch over and over again, and I never get tired of it. Yeah, I'm curious to see how I feel coming out of this movie tonight. Just because, like I said, I haven't watched it since the 90s. I mean, um, the, uh, I want to call it Need for Speed, but Days of Thunder. I love Days of Thunder. That was just a film made to be fun. And from everything i read about this film in the past and everything looks this was also a film made to be fun so josh now that we are older and more refined in our movie tastes maybe we'll just have fun with it knock on wood yeah maybe i mean it could be another days of thunder i'm hoping so i had fun with that film oh my lord so we've given our expectations josh uh what have some of the other people said that have seen this movie on the fifth line of their imdb view Oh, Nigel. Oh, no, I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> but, but I'm going to go ahead and say it seems that I am at it again. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and, and give you a clean and elegant quiz. Just like the title of the movie we're watching tonight. So in that vein, I'm going to choose simple and elegant reviews. So in this fun little experiment, you'll be figuring out the IMDb reviews based on their titles. They're simple and elegant one word titles. <laughs> you you could have won this, Nigel. You could have. No, I was the one that lost this quiz yeah. last time. It's you, got shut out. you got shut out last so, week. So I guess, uh, oh, come on. It's it's the exact same review we all, or same quiz we always do. I just did it based off of titles of the review that are one word with one exception. <laughs> but uh, so. God is dead. <laughs> Josh takes a simple quiz and makes it far more complicated yeah. than it needs to be. Take a drink. Oh, no, 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 no. This is going to be fun for me, and it's going to be fun for the listeners. I don't know how you guys are going to handle this, because I wrote this quiz like two hours ago because I totally forgot I had the quiz. <laughs> so, okay, so, so, oh, no. so, so, so God is dead 
and you're pissing on his corpse. <laughs> Fantastic. No, that's what you did. No, I peed on your shoes, and you're not gone. It's okay. So, Dan, I'm expecting another shutout tonight. Oh, okay. Which is why I already forwarded you all the answers. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was that, that. was what that email was. Mm-hmm. So, um, Tom. Josh. You have yet to win this week, so I'm going to go ahead and let Dan go first. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> all right. So, the title of this, and I'll be very specific on capitalization and punctuation. This uh, reviewer by Dr. Sky Tower 5 wrote in July of 1999, all caps, awesome, with four exclamation marks. I'm going to say eight out of ten. Thompson? I'm going to say ten out of ten. Oh, snap, man. Tom, with the on the dot, that was a ten out of ten <laughs> review. Nice. Oh, so that gives me the double points, right? That gives you the double points. Woohoo! Well, there goes I the am. shutout. out. Yep. Take that. Tom's coming out swinging. All right, Tom, to you. Now, this is the one exception because I couldn't find a particular one. But so this is by Redcap11, who wrote in November of 2001. His review was titled A Joyride. A Joyride. No question marks. Nope, nope. it's Joy Dash Ride. I, I included this one as the exception because A hardly counts as a second word. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Joyride sounds like a. Um... It's still a pretty high up there, but a middle-ish high up, so I'm going to say eight. Nigel? Joy, is that what, a joy ride? Yep. The only capitalization is A. So A, all lowercase, joy hyphen ride. I'm going to say nine. Damn, and Dan with it on the money. That was a nine-star review. Oh, damn it. Damn it. That's, hmm. I figured it'd be, a, if anything, it'd be a seven. Damn. Whew. Son of a bitch. All tied up. All tied up. New ball game, boys. <laughs> All right, so, Nigel, this one's to you. And this one's by Ken Jaha 7 who wrote in August of 2011. His one-worded title was capital S, all lowercase, stupid. <laughs> now, keep in mind, I could have chosen from every single one the word speed, but I chose not to. I, try, I specifically looked for one-worded reviews that wasn't speed. So this one was capital S, stupid. Three out of, three out of ten. Three out of ten, you say, Nigel? Yeah. Stupid. Oh, heavens to Betsy. You probably got it right on the money. I'm going to say two. And Nigel got that one. It was a four-star review. Damn it. So Nigel's Damn. got three. Tom's got two. Still anyone's game. Yep. All right. So, Thompson, to you. Ethan B. Jones underscore 0328. That's not his pen number, by the way. <laughs> Wrote in October of 2017, recommended, capital R, no punctuation. I'm going to have to go back with an eight. Nigel? Seven. Oh, on the money, Dan. Damn it. Yes. As soon as you said it. <laughs> as soon as you said it. Hell's bells. Uh, oh, Dan with five. <laughs> I can still make it, Chief. I can, I can, I can, I can come back from. You got to get the next two on the money, Tom. That, that's right. That was only three. Yes, yes. We're on question four. All right. So, Tom. Yeah. To you. Yeah. By DBZ8, he wrote this in November of '98. Capital W. What? Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> four. Um. Three. And Nigel got that one. It was a one-star review. I should have freaking known. As soon as I said it out loud, like, no, it's lower than that. No. God damn it. I am dumb. I think Nigel's pretty much got that with uh, six points. <laughs> just put the nail in the coffin. What's this last one? Yeah, let's do let's go let's do the last one. Alright, so by Anthony Corzone 3, who wrote November of 2018, capital G. Great with one exclamation mark. Nine. Eight. Damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> right on the Nine. money. It was an eight. <laughs> oh, nice. Ouch. Now whose leg is being pissed on? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Finish the bottle oh, oh man oh Just man that wasn't even close <laughs> i didn't even make it to the second round oh my god oh, man that was shades of last night's ohio state game 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so just for the clincher, do you want to know what the uh, tiebreaker question would have been? Yeah, sure. I'm curious. Right. Yeah. So ABK Nor 19 wrote in June of 03, all lowercase boring. Oh, that doesn't sound like I'm going to say one. Why the hell not? Uh, two. Nigel would have got it. It was a three. <laughs> So, Nigel, <laughs> you got next week's quiz nice. because you scored eight points to Tom's two. <laughs> is there a good, uh, is there a good um, Keanu Reeves quote for the ass kicking I just got from this? I don't know. Yeah, and I'm taller. <laughs> I was thinking more like, Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another speedy episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and bomb disposal expert, Tom. Pop quiz, hot shot. Two trains are driving toward one another. The first train leaves town A at 5 a.m. traveling at 60 miles per hour. The second leaves town B at 7 a.m. at 70 miles per hour. What is the exact time that the collision will occur? Show your work. And thank you for showing back up to the latest section of our Groundhog's Day Parade to Punk Satani here at the Fire Pit. Our feet were getting a bit tired, so we decided to take a bus through this route. Seemed to be the fastest way to speed things along. Ha cha 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 cha! And speaking of punishing puns, what say we check on the team to see how they're handling their own bus? punishing experiences. So why are we back on the bus again? Because we need to find Dan. But my car works. Why aren't we taking that? Because my car is still broken down. Duh. That doesn't make any sense. Besides, Dan could be like anywhere right now. You know, we're never gonna find him if we just keep jumping from bus to bus. These things go like five miles an hour. And somebody is peeing on my leg again. Oh, it's Dan. Holy shit, it's Dan. Dan, you look like shit. It's been a rough time. It's been two hours. It's been a rough two hours. Well, all right, I guess we found you. So let's get off at the next exit and we can head over to the studio and start recording. I know Kung Fu. What? That's uh, from The Matrix, right? Pop quiz, hot shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Oh, oh, that's from Speed too. I get that reference. Wait, no, no, Dan, shut You can't say that on the bus. And I'm taller. That's another one from Speed. I got that one, too. Point break. That's not a line in the movie. You might need to cool it back there. But we didn't do anything. The information I have currently exceeds my current capacity of 80 gigabytes. Oh, my God, now he's quoting Johnny Mnemonic. He really has gone mad. I think that's been established, but good catch. I'm not dealing with you clowns again. Off now. So that was a thing that happened. Ditch dive. Excellent. Bill and Ted, but which one? Dan, why did you jump out of the bus head first? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, sorry. I must have hit my head when I was tossed by that hijacker a little while ago. So, you're back? People keep asking if I'm back, and yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. John, John Wick. Wick. Nice. nice. Now we should get him to a hospital. Yeah, yeah, let's get him to the hospital. Come on, Johnny. Holy moly, their insurance premiums must be through the roof now. Oh, and speaking of through the roof, we're just about at our one year anniversary, and we're quite through the roof about that one. So following this journey, we'll be having a special season recap where we look back at the fire pit year and answer any questions which you might have for us. So if you have anything you've been wanting to know, or if you just want to let people know about your business, or if you just want to let us know how you're feeling in general, just shoot us a line at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Uh, just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, all bold, all caps, 
as well as what you're emailing in regards, whether it's a question for our year-end special, a general question or path request, an ad, a correction from a past mistake, or what have you. And we'll take it on the bus, get it over 50 miles per hour, ramp that beast over a 50-foot embankment, and send it all the way down to an abandoned airport to blow up an empty airplane and never let you know about it because I'm sure you'll figure out what happened on the evening news. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh, time's up! Papers in! And the answer to the quiz was... The Battle of Hastings! I think I grabbed the wrong answer sheet. All A's all around! But it's time for me to get back to my actual day job so you can get back to the show. Thank you all for listening and, as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Yeah, I see it now. Wow, we're just having all kinds of problems today, aren't we? We are not speeding along. Get out. <laughs> Take a drink. Bad movie pun. Dude, I think Keanu Reeves, uh, he's like, what's your motivation? You're a cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see, he's like, what? What? That's that. What's that? Yeah, I got this. I got this. <laughs> I'm going to shit on my friend here. So I'm going to look at this movie through that lens now. The Keanu Reeves motivation was a cat. Now I'm just going to wait for him to just randomly knock shit over. <laughs> that goes on he, the floor. He's going to open <laughs> the elevator, look at it, and just knock it down. <laughs> now, motherfucker. The things we do to get through a movie. Wait, is this the music from Metal Gear Solid? Oh. I think it was pretty fucking personal. I thought it was pretty personal. I mean, shoved a screwdriver right through his brain. You don't get much more personal than that. Is that Jeff Bridges? That no, is. it's Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels, yeah. You know, the yeah. other guy the other guy that's not Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> also, the other guy that keeps getting mixed up for Bill Pullman in Independence Day. <laughs> it doesn't hold. Thanks for pushing that button. The lights on, but you never know what really might be broken. Shut up. Fuck you too, buddy. See, we don't like that character now. I'm gonna clap when he dies. Maybe we can do something about those hostages. <laughs> like shoot them? No! Like a cat. <laughs> like a cat. <laughs> Honestly, shoot the hostage probably is in the LAPD handbook. I already see where it's gonna happen here. My butthole clenched pretty tight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my shoe. <laughs> oh, so my shit dropped too. Hey, Harry, my testicle finally descended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man now. Okay, so far this movie's pretty fun. It's already, my brain had to turn itself off, but this is pretty fun so far. It's starting I off agree. strong. I don't know. I've always liked this film. But then again, I have bad taste in films, I guess. <laughs> or good taste in bad films. And... And what? What, Dan? I'm, Nothing. I'm... I, I can't remember. I got it mixed up with a different film. Now, did they intend to cut him off there when he was in the middle saying, way to go? Yes. I think so. It was, a, it was simply a, an establishing shot to show, hey, he's still alive. <laughs> this movie's not over. Oh, damn. I thought that was it. I thought the movie's tagline was Die Hard in an Elevator. No, that was the sequel, Speed 3. We didn't get greenlit. <laughs> Mommy, what's that? Well, those are called pay phones. They're like cell phones. Only they kind of look like the icon on my uh, cell. Well, that's where they come from, darling. See, back in our day, cell phones used to come attached to poles, and you couldn't take them anywhere. But where is the screen? How am I supposed to play Among Us? Or watch internet porn. <laughs> Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Boot him from the call. 
Hey, there's our hey. cat. Hey, that's um. Yeah, Bill, Bill Pullman. Pullman. <laughs> Bill. It's Jeff Daniels. So this is L.A. In reality, they'd be stuck in traffic for so long that bus would never make it above fifteen. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the plot literally just kicked in. Here in Terminator Two. Yes. Take a drink every time you hear music from other better films. There's no oh way that God. car could pull that off. Yeah, Ford Crown Vic. It's like he could drive it regular and it not fall apart. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the LA. Oh fuck, we're screwed. <laughs> the black guy's like, oh no, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, did you see his look? He's like, fuck. <laughs> oh, this is fucked up. I remember this part. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did they j- Oh, you <laughs> asshole! I had the same exact reaction, Sandra Bullock. I don't just hit a baby. I just hit a baby. You like how I set that up, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> you both are assholes. Sandra Bullock has barely aged a day from this movie. I'm looking at a recent picture of her right now, and I'm like, whose blood are you drinking? Keanu Reeves must have given her the uh, formula when they were filming this movie. <gasps> That's right. Like- He's immortal, too. I forgot. This man has no time. No one gets off. I'm stroking it right now, <laughs> King Koopa. What if I'm getting off right now to your voice? What are you going to say to that? <laughs> uh, click. <laughs> Dial tone. Hey, it's what's his name from, um... Ferris Bueller? Uh, yeah. Hey, I was in Ferris Bueller. You want my dick? I mean, my penis. All Keanu Reeves has to do is touch me on the shoulder and yell, hey, and that will cool any situation I'm in. Wouldn't it? I mean, it's Keanu Reeves. Just rests his hand on your shoulder and says, hey, thanks, Keanu. I needed that. And then he pushes you off the ledge because he's secretly a cat. And then as you're falling, you turn and look up and realize it was a cat and that the LSD is kicking in. How is he able to see anything? There's no news choppers. Keep watching the movie. Sorry, I, I I just get excited. I just he peed a little. I did actually. I need to. I'll be back in a minute. I gotta go change my pants. Ooh, Annie's been hit by a smooth criminal. Oh, Damn man. it! I swear to God, I'm gonna. Damn you, Google Maps! What? What? Road construction wasn't finished on time? Huh? Guess that's not just an Ohio problem. You know, this whole thing seems like a really bad role playing trip. Like you roll, roll, and it's like, okay, now the freeway is uh, no, yeah, out in the middle. It's like, okay, we'll roll to see if you made a cross. Yeah, they keep rolling once. <laughs> yep. I would honestly say that they keep rolling high, but like right there, he rolled low. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, you had to roll at least a ten. You rolled an eleven, and you you had to stick your uh screwdriver in the gas tank so now you're losing gas it's like what <laughs> you're the worst dm ever he obviously passed his uh, strength test but maybe his intelligence was just a little low he's barbarian <laughs> class oh he's also he's also keanu reese so he put a lot of points in charisma tape it, come on, tape it. It's taping. son i am the lapd i will shoot your ass so harry volunteers to examine the device <laughs> fuck you <laughs> Take this, off, take this off and take this off and then this jack i'm naked no that's not true you still got your boots on oh great so now we have a runaway bus going 60 miles per hour armed with explosives in an airport nothing can go wrong here and then it struck you a crescendo annie annie are you okay <laughs> i am hitting you I am hitting you so freaking hard right now. God damn it. I love Dennis Hopper. <laughs> no. Dennis Hopper rolls at 20 every film he's in. Dude, he does. We got to increase this train's speed. <laughs> Make it stop. I can't. I've tried. <laughs> Dan is just defeated. I am. <laughs> I'm not okay. You try the emergency brake. It fails. <laughs> he, even said, he, he even just said, can this day get any worse? <laughs> Let me roll. Yes. <laughs> Dear God. Seriously, this fucking film. That's not how trains work. Where's the rest of the train? Uh, 
it's, it's somewhere, I'm sure. Can I, I do another Annie? Are you okay joke? Absolutely no. not. You've used up no. your allotted amount. Relationships based on intense. High five! I love that line. Can you imagine the sex they had after all oh of it? Oh my god! She got on top and spun. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them were in traction for days. Oh my god, they couldn't. I bet they couldn't walk afterwards. Zip! She's all like, I should tell him about the herpes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he'll find out about them. This movie does move at like a breakneck well, speed. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> Breakneck pace. Ha. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Thesaurus. Too late. Take two drinks because he did not mean that pun. I love how you had the had the, the pause. It moves at a break net. God, I didn't want to make it speed. <laughs> yeah, I just it's like you stop it's like I knew what I was coming. It's like, uh well, it's too late to stop it now. <laughs> this bus is already going fifty miles an hour. <laughs> and now back to the episode. God damn, that movie ended like that train scene did. <laughs> I don't know. How do you end it other than like, okay, the train, they're alive. Um, okay, that's how you end it. Rockin' 90s anthem. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, I don't know if this was more of a it couldn't be more of a 90s movie. I know, right? Let me know when you guys are ready. Sock it to me, baby. Hit us hard, <laughs> baby. Okay, so we're introduced to not Metal Gear music as we're going down a uh, elevator shaft. It goes down and you see a security guard checking on the uh, elevators as I guess he's doing his rounds or something. And he notices somebody working in one of the panels and he goes over and he says, hey, uh, what are you doing? Uh, and then it's Dennis Hopper saying, oh, uh, they called me down here because something's wrong with the wires. He says, let me see a work order. And by work order, he must have meant screwdriver in the ear because that's what he got for his trouble. So uh, after getting a screwdriver to the ear, he's obviously dead and uh, a bunch of business business types doing business type stuff get in the elevator and the uh, cables blow and the elevator rockets down but then the emergency brakes kick in and then it cuts to our hero jack traven played by keanu reeves and his buddy harry played by jeff daniels uh, they're getting out of a car they're putting on their equipment they go inside they meet all the other swat team guys and bomb squad guys and they're saying hey this guy wants money or he's going to blow the emergency brakes they rig a cable to the elevator and they try to save the hostages and uh, then the elevator falls down uh, and it uh, uh, crashes. D they figure out that uh, Dennis Hopper, uh, whose name is Howard Payne, is uh, in the building because of how he knew what they were doing while they were doing it. They uh, they find him. He takes Harry hostage. Uh, but Harry tells Jack, uh, shoot the hostage. So Jack shoots him in the leg and then tries to go after Payne. But Payne supposedly blows himself up. Uh, flash forward at least a month later or something like that. Uh, Harry's getting a medal for uh, getting uh, taken prisoner. And Jack's getting a medal for shooting Harry in the leg. <laughs> but uh, they get um, their medals. Uh, then they go out and have beers. And they're talking about the guy. They still think he's dead. Then the camera cuts and says, haha, he's not dead. Goes to the next morning. Jack's getting his coffee on the way to work. Uh, he talks to a bus driver that he knows bus driver uh leaves gets on his bus drives five feet bus explodes there's a payphone ringing remember those kids jack answers the payphone and uh surprise it's the bomber who bombs at midnight he says hey pop quiz there's a bomb on a bus it goes 50 miles an hour the bomb uh, armed if it drops below 50 the bomb explodes and he just gives jack the bus number just tells him what the bus it is and where it might be so jack races to the bus he gets on the bus later uh, on the freeway, but then the bus driver gets shot by a criminal. We don't know what his crime was because Jack didn't care because obviously he had bigger fish to fry that day. Uh, the bus driver gets shot, so then Sandra Bullock comes on. She's going to be the new driver of the bus, so she's driving the bus. Jack's trying to tell her to keep it above 50. He's trying to get the hostages off. Howard Payne's get seems to be one step ahead the whole time. He blows off the steps and kills the lady as they're trying to get people off the bus. Um, and then they jump a 50-foot gap on a bus. I mean, it wasn't realistic, but it was cool. And uh, they jump the 50 foot gap and then they go on to the LAX airport and they drive around the runway for a little while. In the meantime, Harry figures out who this guy is and they go to his house to arrest him, but he rigged his house to explode. So the house blows up and Harry dies. Unfortunately, sad. We all love Jeff Daniels. Jack gets pissed off, but then tells all the everyone else on the bus that everything's fine. And then Jack realizes that, hey, um, I think he could see us. So he's trying to rig something up with the camera. They get a television crew to uh, find the feed and loop it. 
Jack gets people off the bus, then he gets him and Annie off the bus. The bus explodes and destroys a, a cargo plane. They try to fake out Howard and say, hey, uh, you know, we'll, we'll set your money out where you want it. But Howard is, again, one step ahead of him. He figures out that they loop the feed and they try to trick him. So he takes the money, but he also takes Annie hostage and he puts a bomb vest on her and they get on another subway and they have a fight and they're on top of the subway fighting. Howard tells Jack that he's smarter than him and he'll always be smarter than him. But Jack pushes his head up to a thing and it cuts his head off. And Jack says, but I'm taller. Then uh, disarms the bomb vest on Annie, but the train's out of control and he can't stop it. And he also doesn't have the key to her handcuffs. So he speeds up the train to derail it because apparently you can survive those and him and Annie end up saying that they're going to have really hot sex after the train crashes and it does crash right in the middle of Hollywood Boulevard and they sit there making out while everyone is taking pictures of them Hopefully they don't take pictures of them before things get too far. But anyways, um, the camera cuts out and before Jack and Annie can make this a not PG-13 movie. And that's our movie. Uh, it really does end right there. Like they kiss on the, the, on the wreckage of the subway and then it cuts to credits. So that is the movie. That is Speed. I tried to give it a fast summary. I think I got sidetracked there a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, to jump some off ramps, uh, plow through a train station, uh, blow up a plane here and there. But you got there in the end, Nigel. And, yeah, but you know, like I said, it, it, like the, the movie just kind of keeps going and going and going and going and going. But we're just going to go through some final thoughts, and we will start with Josh. Josh. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Snake? Snake? Snake! Sorry, I thought my ringtone was fitting for this movie because, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I-, I need to go back and play Metal Gear Solid now. Okay, so um, all of my memories are wrong about this film. Um, clearly, either I was an idiot back in the late 90s or... I was an idiot back in the late 90s. Those are really my only two options. I really enjoyed this movie. Yes, the dialogue was kind of campy, but uh, I just think that time has stagnated my memories of this film because this film was actually a lot of fun. I remember it being boring, but I was definitely not bored during this viewing. Um, it was a lot of fun. Shit, just it, it, some of the jokes that we were making and just kept me going and kept it exciting, I should say. But it's like they were unnecessary because the film itself would have been fun just to watch by myself. Like, I felt like halfway through the movie, I'm like, I need popcorn for this film because this film is such a popcorn flick. That doesn't even begin to describe it. It, shit, it starts off just going and then it just keeps going and it doesn't have a really slow part like I was reading about that they knew they had a hit on their hands whenever they would watch people in theaters watching this movie. Theaters are these things in pre-2020 that people would go to and watch movies on not their own screens. But uh, they would watch them and they'd walk backwards so they can keep their eyes on the screen so they don't miss anything or mi- minimize the amount of uh, screen they're missing while they're away going to the bathroom. Fortunately, in 2021, we are able to pause and go urinate. But uh, no, this movie was exciting from top to bottom. Definitely, like Dan mentioned, the uh, chemistry between uh, Keanu and Sandra Bullock was awesome. Loved Dennis Hopper. Just every scene he was in was awesome. Just all the character interactions was actually really good. I mean, it was a stupid, simple plot, but just the execution was great. Like, I don't know. I'm going to leave that at my final thoughts, and maybe I'll add on some more of your guys's. But yeah, that's that's what I got right now. So, Nigel, how about you? Yeah, I hadn't seen this movie in a while, and I forgot just how much this movie just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And it really does start really quick. It never really lets up. And I, even though the movie has a lot of action set pieces and it has a lot of stuff going on, all of the stuff to me had purpose. There was a natural progression of the things that were going on. Like it, it introduces the characters in this particular situation and the movie doesn't even slow down. Like when it goes to like a couple days later and Jack's going to get his coffee and then boom, another bus explodes and then immediately bam kicks off the main plot of the movie, which is the bomb on the bus. Like it never stops, even though it never stops. It still gave the audience moments to breathe and take in each scene as it was happening and understand the stakes that were involved. It's kind of rare that in my opinion, you see an action movie like this, that kind of benefits from multiple rewatches because you do actually catch things that you didn't catch before. Um, Like uh, 
just the little things like, uh, you know, why they couldn't go this way on the freeway. They could only go that way. It's like, oh, because there was traffic over there. That's why they couldn't. Just just little stuff. I think the audience benefits from that, from just multiple rewatches of this movie. Uh, I'll just summarize my final thoughts. The movie that moves at a breakneck speed and it never really lets up. But I like the fact that it never lets up. It doesn't slow down and it doesn't have a lot of unnecessary exposition and stupid shit. I, I really like that. But we'll, I'll save some more stuff for our discussion here in a minute. I'd like to hear Tom's thoughts because he's the one that came into this movie totally blind. He had no, you know, he'd never seen it. I'm kind of glad I didn't see this before. And well, I did see the scene where um, Hopper lost his head. Um, I just glimpsed at it one time when I was younger. And, you know, but at the same time, I didn't really watch it. I like this film. This was a fun film. I don't know if I would have liked it back in the day, but I definitely enjoy it now. Just, an amazingly fun film. Turn your brain off fun. Uh, you, you said a lot of things, both of you did actually, that I wanted to kind of point out. And to add to yours a little bit, Nigel, going back to like Top Gun and some of those, there wasn't that needless... They didn't kill... Oh, now I can't remember his character's names, but Keanu Reeves' partner, they didn't kill him in the beginning, give him that personal thing yeah they did eventually kill him sorry guys spoiler alerts but they didn't have it and there wasn't any needless anything like that like you know you're you're just trying to make up for your dad or anything like that it was just he was trying to do his job and stop this guy who's blowing shit up simple and effective i will digress a little bit because otherwise i'm just going to repeat the same things you both said the technicals i'm going to pick on Personally, I'm the kind of guy that likes when a film sticks close to reality, when they like anything they do can be done within the realm of you know, realism. A bus can only do this these things because it is a bus. Planes can only do these things when they are planes. Uh, I hate when films get egregious and just overtly cartoonish, like uh, when you take a battleship and get it to go over 200 miles an hour and get it to Tokyo Drift, cough, cough, battleship. That takes me out of this. And yes, the practical stunts were practical, but there were just so many wires and everything else to make the overtly cartoonish things such as having a bus jump a 50 foot embankment with no incline or any ways to help it aside from invisible wires that took me out a train that just explodes excuse me a subway that explodes out of the street and skids to a stop on hollywood boulevard way out of it and it could just be that i've seen it so many times it's lost its charm and other things that bug me about this film such as how a 50 plus year old man with only one thumb was able to sneak onto multiple buses and plant explosions sneak into multiple buildings and plant explosions with all the technology such as oh wireless cameras from the early 90s without getting caught for one number one i could not ask those questions as we were watching it but then i turned my brain off and just watched keanu reeves be an fbi agent or lapd guy and just flirt so hard with sandra bullock who's so cute so good. It's, her role was just to be the girl that drives the bus and they still made it work and you felt for both of them. So it's not enough to really like ruin the watch. It didn't take me so far out. Although how he knew Keanu Reeves patterns and you know where he would be at any certain time to blow up the right bus and have the right bus have other explosions that he could get to it. Uh, and then I turned my brain off right there. And it's just like, nope. Oh. Just turn it off. Um, off you, weren't, it you, weren't, you weren't paying attention in that scene then. What? Which? What? Which scene? Okay, when, a lot when, of okay. When when he blew up the first bus. Yeah. And then he called. He called the payphone. Mm hmm. He's across the street. Oh, I know he's across the street, but he would have had to have been tailing Keanu for a while to get his patterns oh, to know okay. which and to know the routes of all those buses, so he'd know which one would be at this stop that he would or would not take. He'd be at this coffee shop at this time to get this bagel, and then this bus would be there. It would take an intense amount of planning between then and now. You said 
or as we were watching ha- him having all these backup plans for buses in case the elevator plan didn't work. Okay, that's within reason. But to know which ones are the right ones, you know, there are at least five or six under buses going around with bombs. He planted just in case. And that just happened to be the right one. But I'm going to walk it back now because now I'm on a rant about a film I liked <laughs> and I enjoy this film. It was a bad film. No, it was a cheesy film. It was a cheesy film, but an enjoyable film. Did anything take you guys out of it? I mean, especially upon subsequent watchings that you saw, I was like, yeah, that makes absolutely no sense. What the fuck? Well, besides the basic physics, I, I know I said this when we watched Doom, was that like episode three or four? Like this movie, you have to literally take your brain, set it aside from the get go, If you want to enjoy this film. And that's what I did straight away. You don't think about any of the technicalities of it. You hand wave all of the most of your concerns by saying that he spent well using that one line he said about I've been planning this for two, three years or whatever. He's had that much time to prepare all this shit. Right. So regardless of the situation he's in, he's had that much time to prepare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just you hide all of the flaws in this film under that single line. Yeah. You got to set your brain aside. Like, yeah, you can nitpick this movie, but if you do, you're going to have a bad time. (laughs) Nigel, what about you? I think the only thing that really took me out of the film, the only one that I, I find like is completely unrealistic that I can't find a logical explanation for is that two ton bus jumping a 50 foot gap on the freeway. I just like, that's definitely Hollywood magic Mm -hmm. um, and and Hollywood physics. Him having all these backup plans that didn't take me out of it because they established that he's a pretty smart guy and he's been planning these things for years. So the timeline actually makes sense. Like if you plan these things for years, it would make sense that he was able that he'd be figuring out all these bus routes figure out how to get on and off buses without being detected. Things like that. Like, it just makes sense. They don't say like, well, he just started doing all this yesterday. Um, and also, even though Howard Payne's smart in the movie, he's not hyper intelligent. That didn't take me out of it. The, the only thing that really takes me out is, the, is the, the jump. As cool as that effect is, as cool as that stunt was, it's definitely like, oh, yeah, that would get about 10 feet and then it would just plummet to the ground like a brick. Yeah, and especially considering how tight they kept everything else. Yeah, it was like, oh, we need to make this bus take this higher pin turn. So we got to move everyone to the side of the bus. It skirted the realm of possibility, but it stayed well with it. Well, I wouldn't say well with it, but it's like, okay, yeah, they rolled an uh, an 18 on that one. They got they got that luck roll in there. yeah. Like, like I said, some of the bus stunts I can believe. Like, I, th- like I said, the one where he gets everybody on one side of the bus so it doesn't tip over. Yeah, th- that one is a little bit suspension of disbelief, but it's not totally unrealistic. No, it's like honestly, I think that the bus thing is, while well, still unbelievable, they do say enough. It's not like they jumped in on that scene. You know, no pun intended. Thinking it's just like they said, it's probably a decline. Just using Hollywood physics in the hall in the uh audience viewer mindset bus go fast bus is not on uh going to ramp up but bus is going to go and fall but no no but it's like if you're going fast enough the bus is only going to go a little bit yes it's yeah but like physics doesn't work that way but i honestly think that that was is more yeah just the only thing that takes me out of it is that jump because also like to, in order to clear that jump to get that fast to even have a chance at it maybe a high speed supercar could do it. Yeah, I like, could go like a you'd have to be going well over a hundred miles an hour, and it's Which established that bus probably that bus probably has a top speed of about sixty five. Yeah, well, okay. the speedometer went to seventy. Yeah, you know, I've been on city buses; they don't go that fast. Now, granted, none of the buses in our hometown go on the freeway, and L A buses are made to go on the freeway, so maybe they can go a little faster, but uh, not by much. Like I said, top speed may be sixty five, um, and not enough to clear it because they don't have a straight shot either. Like they have to turn onto that ramp to get to that jump. So they're not going in a straight line. It's not like that time to rev it up and they're not def- definitely not going 120 miles an hour needed to clear that thing. Yeah. But it's Hollywood magic. If I can turn my brain off and know that they're crashing cars left and right in days of thunder and no one's getting in trouble for it. I can suspend my disbelief and say, yeah, absolutely. A bus in this universe can clear a 50 foot gap. It's like I said, you got to set your brain aside watching this film. As with most action films, if you don't do it, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, I mean, my favorite movie of all time, my fa- one of my favorite action movies of all time is the classic Die Hard. 
And that movie features Bruce Willis jumping off a building wearing nothing but a fire hose around his waist. So I'm like... Yeah, they made that work. Yeah, although, yeah, you point that out. He probably would have broke his spine in five places, so on and so forth. But yeah, yeah. I think uh, Ebert said it best when he said, this film could have been much worse, but it knew how to make all the dumb shit work. I'm paraphrasing. And yeah, this made all the dumb shit work. Yeah, and then... I think like Die Hard, as I mentioned in my uh, expectations, like Die Hard, yes, the movie is cheesy and the the, the effects require you to be kind of brain dead and just kind of accept it. Mm -hmm. But I thought the performances in this movie are awesome. I think Keanu Reeves is great. I love his chemistry with with Sandra Bullock, who is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, I mean, we've established on this channel many, many times that Dennis Hopper is amazing at everything he does. Yes. Oh my God. If we'd just been following his character this whole film, it would have been excellent because he was so yeah, good. He was so good. He was he was hammy when he needed to be hammy. He was diabolical when he needed to be diabolical. He was legitimately scary and creepy when he needed to be scary and creepy. So like he just he ticked so many boxes in this movie and he played off of Keanu Reeves so well. They only have like two or three scenes when they're in the same room together. But they played like those phone conversations between the two of them are just so good. And I just love the performances in this movie. I really do. I love it. And I think Joss Whedon did a really good job of writing some really sharp, witty dialogue in this movie. So say what you will about the uh, the Justice League film. When Whedon is on, he's on, especially when he's on as script doctor. Quick and the dead notwithstanding. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently his only job in Quick of the Dead was make town Claymore. So. Uh, it, he, he did it, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he blew up that town good, so yeah. you know, success, I guess. Although I, I do slightly disagree about the chemistry between uh, Keanu and Sandra Bullock. I thought they played well. I'm sure they're on screen, they're on set chemistry work, but, you know, it wasn't a lot of romantic going on there. But they did the um, lampshade that's like, this is a high tension moment. You know, we're probably just, you know, we survived death horny right now. Probably won't work in the end, but fuck it. We're going to have sex. Yeah, I think it was one of those ones like, um, and Tom, you probably don't like this reference, but Pacific Rim, like they played that whole situation and then they ended up not being in a relationship or not mm-hmm. being, uh, yeah, not not forming any kind of a sexual relationship. And that worked in that film. Whereas in this one, I think it kind of like, especially the way they they played into it, I think that it really worked to make these two romantically involved by the end of it. Yeah, and also it didn't it didn't feel forced. Like they had a natural progression of their relationship um, right away. In fact, she doesn't like him at first. Like she she gets pissed off at him for for the way he's getting on the bus and all this other stuff. So, and also she's kind of a bitch like to the other people on the bus. Like when she's like, I miss my car. I really miss my car. And I don't know. I just, I, I like their chemistry. I thought they had some really good banter, really good back and forth. And I don't think they'll make it to Friday, but I think that they did a good job. Yeah. 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 They made it to the next morning and maybe the morning after. Yeah. They, like I said, they probably had a whole, a, a, about a week's worth of hot sex and then maybe tried to make it work without the sex for another week. And then after that, they're like, nah, there were, they're, they, 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 I, I'd like to think in the sequel, that was never made. They just became friends with benefits. Yeah. You yeah. Know? They probably got con- constantly tired of Keanu walking around the house, just knocking random shit off the wall. <laughs> and all that stuff. Cat Keanu yeah. Reeves. But that being said, they were yeah, amazing. Yeah. It was, it was, it was so, fun. But I, yeah, I think I've hit my notes. Um, I would definitely recommend this film. I don't think it's uh, like a repeat watch. It's when you like throw on every like couple, like every couple years. Like, oh, I haven't seen this film in a while. But I would definitely recommend anyone who's listening to this podcast and hasn't seen this film. Yeah, it's got yeah, my thumbs and I, up. I would recommend it too. If you're a fan of Die Hard or the first two Lethal Weapon films, uh, the, the, this is not a buddy cop film, but I mean, if you're a fan of Die Hard or Lethal Weapon or just action movies in general, uh, give this one a watch. It, you know, it'll it it's I thought I think it's good. I think it's good. Dumb fun. Josh, would you recommend this film? No, I would say I watched it. I didn't hate it, but I wouldn't recommend. This oh, film. oh, oh, a dissenting opinion from. Wow. Tom. No, no, no. Just because I I'm kidding. No, I uh, I, I would probably. Rec- yeah, I would recommend this movie. It's It was a lot of fun. All right, and that does it for tonight's show. Um, as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
be sure to like and subscribe as it really does help out the podcast. And be sure to join us on Discord. Have some fun interacting with all of us, uh, talking among some of our fledgling fans. Um, you know, Rob, Derek Thorne, Danielle, Tucker. They need some, uh, they need friends. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we really like talking with you guys on it. So uh, join the Discord. Um, suggest Movie Pass. Give us some feedback. You can also f- like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Um, links to all these social media can be found in the episode's description. And if you want to reach out to us old school style um, on the uh, email, our email is on the interspersal. You can talk sponsorships or give us long winded essays on movies that you like or don't like, or all the ways that Tom is wrong and Dan and myself are correct. But the link to the email and all of our social media is in this episode's description. And uh, you can find us as always at firepit.podbean.com. And I want to give a special shout out to some of our newer followers and some of our newer Facebook followers. Um, Connor, I'd like to thank you for listening to the podcast. Thanks for popping in. Last name, of course, abstained for, you know, because I'm sure they don't want to be stalked by our adoring fans, as well as Damien, who has also joined us on Facebook. We've got a lot of names to get through on Facebook, and I'll try to shout out to all of you as we go along. It's going to be a while, but I promise I will get there. But thank you for joining us and keeping the fire pit burning. And uh, I'll give a special shout out, as always, to Peggy, friend of the channel. Appreciate the feedback this week. Uh, Talked to you about some stuff with the channel, and uh, you gave me some honest feedback, so thank you. Also, a special shout out to all of my new co-workers that are listening to the show. Um, I haven't been uh, let go yet, so I'm hoping you guys all like it. People are still stopping by my desk, so (laughs) I'm assuming it's okay. Uh, So, But thanks for listening. Always appreciated. yeah. Well, I would hope that uh, your employment isn't based off of the podcast. I don't know. I haven't been there long enough to judge or to gauge it anyways. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm only so like I have a, a shitty or... episode. Dan, I need to see you in my office. <laughs> oh, no. Well, if they come back and listen to our earlier episodes, Dan would have been called in a while ago. Right. But I would like to give a shout out to, as always, my wife who deals with me and I don't understand why. But uh, also, shout out to Sync Lounge and uh, Plex for allowing us to watch these videos in sync as we do, not the band. And a uh, new shout out to our new recording platform of Zencaster. Uh, we ditched Skype two weeks ago after they lost our selection section uh, six. We're sorry for that. It was truly the most epic episode we've ever recorded. Oh, it was the best. Oh, my God. I just uh, The guest stars we had call in. It was amazing. I mean, Patrick Stewart Ooh. called in and he recorded so much stuff. He was going to be a special guest every episode, but Skype screwed us over. So we've been using Zencaster. So if you have noticed a... Uh, increase in quality of at least the audio not tom it's just it's because of zencaster edit out all of john why do i antagonize the editor <laughs> you should know better by now and yeah, let me time stamp this in particular dick over josh's <laughs> audio well, that was a fun run on the highway, and I'm really glad we didn't die. But, Nigel, where are we going next? Well, Tom, funny you mentioned death, because uh, next week we're following the immortal Keanu Reeves. Seriously, look it up. And uh, we're going to watch Bill and Ted die and navigate the afterlife with death himself in Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Excellent and totally awesome. I uh, can't wait to get to that one and continue this parade to Punxsutawney. And until then, I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. See, this is uh, Detective... uh, Fuck, what's her name from... uh... Stop, stand by. Don't say shit. This is my joke. <laughs> and now my internet craps out. <laughs> God, we're having the best luck. 2021. Am I right?